Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Hot Zone. I'm your host, Jason Robinson. And in The Hot Zone today, we have got the stars of This Is Us, Sterling K. Brown, and Susan Kalechi Watson. We're going to speak to both of them about the premiere of This Is Us, about race relations in America, and about the importance of mental health. All that and more. So stay tuned, because you're in the hot zone. Randall, are we good? I mean, I've been texting and reaching out and I haven't heard anything back really. And I'm just so worried about, about you and Beth and the girls, you know, with everything that's going on in the news. I'm so overwhelmed by it. I can't even imagine what you guys are all going through. So I'm so sorry. Sorry about what? Specifically, what are you apologizing for? I'm just, I'm sorry about what's going on in the country and the protests and Okay, the... but you've never apologized before. And this isn't the first black person to be killed on camera. No, it's, it's not. I don't know, this feels different. It's not for me, Kate. It's never been different for me. We grew up in the same house. Things like this have been happening to black people for years, and we've never talked about it. Like, not once. Not once in 40 years. I don't know what to say. I don't want to say... I don't want to say the wrong thing. Okay. So, growing up, I, uh, I just had to keep so many things to myself because I didn't want to make you guys feel bad. I didn't want you to have to worry about saying the wrong thing. The most intense scene was with Randall and Kate. That was good. It, they had that conversation um, between an African-American and a white uh, person who they're both brothers and sisters. And I want to ask you, Sterling, first off, how intense was that for you to be a part of that scene as not only an actor, but also an African-American man? And do you think that Randall was a little tough on Kate's character? Jason, the scene was so tough. You have to give me a St. Louis moment. I felt like it was a wonderful opportunity that the writers were stepping into to not throw blame, but to just try to explain a perspective. Mm -hmm. um, explain a perspective of living life in such a way that you were always sort of putting other people's needs ahead of your own because you knew that if you brought into the room what you were feeling, they would necessarily be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And then he reached a point over these past several months where he no longer had the capacity to make someone else comfortable. He just kind of had to say what was on his mind. Yeah. And it wasn't like he didn't love his sister or that he had issue with her per se, but the idea that you can go a lifetime and sort of be oblivious to all the other deaths that have transpired and have been captured on camera and now this particular moment, you feel sorry. There's a mixture of appreciation, but why now? Like, why not before? Like, this has been a, happening for our whole life, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it was really interesting in, in playing the scene because, like, I told Ken, I was like, "This is a this is the way I, this is the way Sterling starts like a lot of episodes." It's like, I don't think he's gonna cry in this episode, and they're like, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, nah, because he's not, he's, he's frustrated, he's upset or whatever, but like in all of that, he still sort of feels for her yeah. in a way, but like he can't go and comfort her. He has to, like Sue says, you got to put the mask on yourself first coming out of the airplane so that you can be able to take care of everybody else. Like I remember Chrissy beforehand, she's like, I'm, I'm nervous, but 
I'm excited to do it with you. And I was like, I, I feel you. I'm excited to do it with you because we have an ensemble now. And what I mean by that is not just a group of actors, but a group of actors who have a relationship that has been developed over time. And when you have like an ensemble, there's a level of trust in being able to go to certain places, knowing that people won't take this ish personally. Right. Like this is what we have to do in order to tell the story most authentically. I'm so pleased that like there's a genuine affinity that we have a cat as a cast have for one another that allows us to explore these things and know that when it's all done, it's hugs. Yeah. It's hugs and kisses, especially when COVID is over. Right. And what did you feel about the race relations, Susan? I know it's a heavy uh, one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Come on, ja Rule, give it to me. <laughs> Let me get your brush. Let me comb my way. Um, <laughs> I got you. I got you. I'm going to um, do it for you. You know, wow. You know, hmm, what can you even say? Here's what I will say. I think it's necessary to contribute your voice in some way. You know, one thing I felt very strongly about is you got to say or do something. You can't see this going on and, and just play neutral, right. you know? Um, because the severity of the situation necessitates, uh, it necessitates that. And I use my voice in the way that I know how. I think we have to meet ourselves at the moments, at the places of where true change can happen, you know, and that, that can only happen if you decide to do or say something, you know what I'm saying, in response to it. Because at least then it's gonna point out where you're at. Do you know how many black men who can choose whatever therapist they want choose me? It's a very low number. You were highly recommended. Your mother and I are the same gender. We're the same race. I'm probably around the same age she was when your father died. Another therapist, a good one, not an overpriced hack like me, might say you're looking for someone like your mother to help you process her, what she's done, her illness. Randall has been facing a lot of depression, anxiety, and stress throughout the season. And I myself deal with anxiety and stress. And, you know, I go to therapy. But um, can you speak about, both of you speak about dealing with mental health, especially in the African American community? Even my own family sometimes kind of laughs or kind of thinks that mental health is not really a thing. Um, and Randall, he actually seeked out a new therapist, an African-American, and releasing his white therapist. Um, speak to me about the importance of um, uh, you know, mental health in the African-American community. Similar to your family, my family also will seek out maybe a pastor or a reverend, but like to actually go see a therapist is like, I don't want a stranger up in my business, yeah. right? I was like, they, they may be able to help you in a way that you pass the camp. I'm not saying either or, maybe it's both. Um, then there's folks who won't speak to anyone because they should be able to figure out the ish on their own, right? You know, life is hard. Why am I going to cry about it? I got to, you know, keep it moving. There's a, the idea of self-reflection and it's weird for me as an artist because it's kind of part of my job. But there's a lot of people that are like, why would I want to dig that shit up? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I put that, I put, I dealt with that a long time ago. I'm here now. Like, why would I want to revisit? That doesn't sound like anything that will be comforting or healing. That sounds like pain, right? right? The idea that like you have to sort of examine the choices and the, the things that you have committed to in your life to construct who you are now and whether or not you want to be this person right whether or not there's something to be re-examined is kind of anathema mm -hmm. to a lot of folks especially when your life is a beautiful struggle it's like i'm just gonna keep struggling right, right? and then the idea that needing help is an admission of weakness too there's a part of that on a cultural sort of level that i hope people are beginning to let go of right and recognizing that first of all nobody gets where they where they are by themselves right and seeking professional help 
is not an admittance of weakness. That's an admittance of strength. Like you see that there are some holes or blind spots that you cannot reach on your own and that I need someone to help me be the best version of myself possible. Um, especially if you have the means to do it. Sometimes there's a whole issue about whether or not it's even affordable, et cetera. But if it is, why not seek that help out? I love that we get a chance to address it through Randall, even though his socialization is different than, than most black folks in this country. Um, he's still raised by Jack, who wasn't like an open book by right, any right, stretch right. of imagination. <laughs> so he probably didn't have the best role model in terms of just sharing his life with other people uh, mm -hmm. as a way of gaining healing. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, but I hope that blacks, black folks will see it. And I, I will trumpet it. Like, I'm going to tell you, these past six, seven months, your boy was Zooming with this therapist like nobody's business. Yeah. I was like, right. there's some shit going on in this house, and I need Me too. Help. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> we made a promise to one another that we would never get lost in each other, and I broke that promise. And you let me. You have let me bend to your every need time and time again. Oh, we have kids? I have to step back from my job. You quit your job? I work overtime. You have a dream of buying your father's building. It becomes my dream, too. You run for city councilman? I stand by your side. You win city councilman. Now what? I'm supposed to give up what I love to become a politician's wife? How many days am I supposed to go to, Randall? And how long? And what if city council isn't enough? What then? That's not what no, I want. No, I finally have something. I have something that I have been looking for longer than I knew, and I am not going to give that up. I am not going to bend. And that's the problem. Our lives don't work unless I'm doing the bending. It doesn't. And we both know it. Susan, I, I did want to ask you a question in terms of there, there's no more stress on a certain population than the African-American woman, right? They have the most stress out of everyone. And how do African-American women and, you know, Beth's character handle their career, their family, and you know their love life how do they balance making all of that come together as one one of the things that can help the most is to 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 understand balance that's it's one of the major things it's like mm. um, somebody told me i need more balance in my life and i was like really because oh yeah you're right and then i saw the places where it's like doing all this here and then not this here and we have a tendency to you know, this, at some point in this, um, during the pandemic, I asked friends, I said, once the, the you know, racial uprising was happening, the pan I said, are we okay? Are we just used to handling a whole lot of stress? Mm. So we're just being okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. But are we? I really had to, and I posed it to like a group of friends. And there's this assumption that you're supposed to, that you were, you know, you're strong, you know, you're tough, you can bear it, you can handle it, you bear up under it. There is a, an amount of balance that we need to remind ourselves to have. And part of that balance includes things that make us happy. There's a self-care movement right. that I love that's happening is to recognize when you need to just step out and take care of yourself. Mm. There's also recognizing yourself as a whole person outside of being a wife or a mom or a career person. You know, what are just the things that nurture you and feed your spirit? Um, it's Lovecraft episode seven or eight. Yes. Whichever one it was. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes, yes. But that's, but you see what I'm saying? Like it's yeah. getting into our consciousness now of like, wait a minute. Yeah. You know, there's this, this side of ourselves that we don't nurture that, you know, if we had more of that balance, you know, it would relieve some of the stress that we're feeling along what Sterling's saying is reaching out, getting help. Having yeah. people help you like get through these moments, and I think you have to do it all on your own. And you know, I'm a huge advocate of prayer. You know what I mean? Sterling could tell you, nobody bigger than me. I raise my hand the highest. Mm -hmm. But um, understanding that there are also people in place to help you. 
you know what I mean, here as well, and that they are resources as well. Don't let those resources pass you by, you know, um, looking for to metabolize things just one way. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, as, and I'm a huge advocate, do not get it twisted. But uh, there are so many, and I would say that on the other side too, for people who just look to people, there's a spiritual nurturing you have to do. It's all balance, you know, but to know that we, we can do that, that's, that's something that I think we're just awakening to, you know, uh, as a whole, which I think is really encouraging.